right guys, so welcome to the Relationships and Biodiversity Lab. So you know anytime you see this packet, you know that this is a state mandated lab. This is required for the regions, part D, which is coming up very, very, very soon. Now this lab is actually pretty extensive, so they divide it into two part labs. This is gonna be the first part of the lab, and the next video will give you part two, all right? So the lab actually starts out with a biodiversity crisis. Yikes. So let's read. So it says, plant and animal species are being lost at a rate that is unprecedented in the history of life. Human activities are responsible for much of this biodiversity crisis. Some biologists estimate that within the next century, half of Earth's current species may become extinct. That means that they won't exist here anymore. That's very scary. Extinction and the loss of biodiversity occurs when species do not have adaptations that enable them to survive environmental changes. Human activities such as destruction of natural habitats and pollution are thought to be a major, excuse me, are thought to be the major environmental factors causing the decline of species, but others are also important. Overhunting, introduction of foreign species that compete with native species, and removal of predators have also played a significant role in endangering some species. So those are all ways that we try to control um, species within an environment. So why should we worry about the loss of biodiversity? We depend on many species for food, clothing, shelter, oxygen, soil fertility, the list goes on and on. Large scale extinctions of other species may be a warning to us that we are altering the biosphere so rapidly that our species is threatened too. Biodiversity ensures the availability of a rich variety of genetic material that may lead to future agricultural or medical discoveries having significant value to humankind. Some species that have been used as source for medicine and other useful products. Scientists now use genetic engineering to transfer desirable genes from one species to another. As diversity is lost, potential sources of these genetic materials uh, may be lost with it. Biodiversity also increases the stability of the ecosystem. Every population is linked directly or indirectly with many others in an ecosystem. Disruptions in the numbers and types of, and types of one species can upset e ecosystem stability. This means that extinction of one species can accelerate the rate of ex extinction for other species. So if you guys remember, uh, species are always living and interacting amongst each other and they depend on each other. That's called interdependence. Endangered species hold medicinal, agricultural, ecological, commercial, and aesthetic value. They must be protected so that future generations can experience their presence and value. So assume that the plant you identify as being closely related to Botanicurus grows rapidly, survives in many environments, and produces cure-all. News reports indicate that Botanicurus plants may become extinct unless expensive efforts are made to preserve the species. Members of your research team disagree as to whether or not Botanicurus should be saved. So remember, cure-all is the chemical that's produced in Botanicurus uh, that's used in medicines to help cure or treat cancer but the species is going extinct. So our jobs as scientists are to see if any of these species might produce cure-all based on conducting a lot of these laboratory tests. That's what we're gonna be doing, all right? So the first question says, state three examples of human activities that could endanger Botanicurus, right? So we already talked about mass or, or over hunting right? Introduction of foreign species that compete with this, all right, with the native species. And also the removal of predators can increase the herbivore population in which they can start eating these plants, right? State three reasons why it might be important to preserve Botanicurus. Well, if it produces cure-all, which is a chemical that helps to treat cancer, that might prevent or increase the risk of people getting cancer not getting treatment for the cancer, or even a potential cure for cancer in the future. State two arguments people might make for not preserving Botanicurus. Well, in order for them to grow Botanicurus, that means that another species has to suffer because it's gonna be competing for those other species. So maybe it might endanger another species that's there. Also, we might not know the long-term effects of growing mass amounts of Botanicurus and preserving uh, cure-all, okay? So we need to conduct these tests 
And our first types of tests that we're gonna be conducting are structural tests, all right? And there's three different structural tests that we're gonna be doing. Structural characteristics of plants, structural characteristics of seeds, and microscopic stem structure. We have Spotanicurus, and we're gonna be looking at species X, Y, and Z, and comparing them. Now, if we're comparing the structures, and they tend to be very similar to Botanicurus, we off to a pretty good start. We might think that they actually have uh, something to do with each other, or they might have some type of connection to one another. So they might actually produce cure-all, which is what we're looking for. So if you look here, and you look at the structural characteristics of plants for Botanicurus, which is down here, you can see that the petals are yellow and violet, right? The stems are, there's about, sorry, there's about three leaves on each. It's kind of like a faded green, right? And a very skinny stem that's there. There's about five petals on the Botanicurus, all right? But if you look at all the other ones, species X looks a little bit more different. Their leaves are a little bit more greener and there are no purple petals here, right? So species X, just by looking at the plant itself, doesn't look like it's that closely related. But let's look at species Y. Species Y has three green leaves, which is great, but all of their petals are much larger and they're all blue, like very, very deep blue. Again, doesn't look so much like Botanicurus, right? But let's look at species Z. Now, conveniently, they've been placed next to each other, right? So if you look at species Z, there's three green leaves that are here, a very skinny stem, and it has those same three yellow petals and the same two blue petals at the top. So they look awfully similar to each other, right? So just based on the plant characteristics, one might conclude or might look at species Z and say, hey, that might produce curl. But let's look at the seeds. Species X seeds are very, very small, round, looks like a deep red, right? And if you look at the Botanicurus one, they're very flat and a little longer. Again, doesn't look like they're closely related at all. Species Y in comparison, they're much smaller and they tend to have like a similar color to Botanicurus, but once again, they're very, very tiny and it doesn't look like they're very closely related at all. Now, if you look at species Z, these are also flat. They look like they could be like a little longer and it looks like they're very similar in color to the Botanicurus. Once again, the seeds look very similar to one another in species Z than species X and species Y, all right? Now, if we look at the microscopic stem structure, we pulled up Botanicurus here. I don't know if you wanna yeah, get in. Yeah, we will include images of this with, <laughs> with the lab because it's hard to get it on film. It's hard to get it on film, but basically you'll be able to see the vascular bundles. Now, just quickly, the vascular bundles are the parts of the plant that are responsible for carrying the nutrients and the water up and through the root of the plant to the rest of the, of the tree or to the rest of the plant that's there. Vascular bundles are extremely important. You can think of them as being like the circulatory system of the plant, right? The same way that oxygen and nutrients are carried through our blood, it's the same thing for the plants that are here, except they don't have blood, right? And if you actually look at the Botanicurus, their vascular bundles are very scattered around. So where it says microscopic stem structure for botanicurus, you want to write the word scatter. Those vascular bundles are scattered around. Now, by comparison to species X, if we put species X under the microscope, again, pictures coming soon, near you, you can actually see that the vascular bundles are circular. They only edge around the, per the circumference mm -hmm of uh, the stem, the cutaway of the stem of the leaf. So by comparison, species X already in its stem structure is not exactly the same as Botanicurus. But let's look at species Y. Species Y, again by comparison, is also circular. So it seems to be more closely related to X than Botanicurus because remember, Botanicurus is scattered. And then last but not least, species Z. Now, if you remember, species Z for uh, the plant structure and the seed structure was most closely similar. Let's see if the stem structure is also closely similar. And again, species Z's uh, stem structure 
the vascular bundles are scattered. So it seems as though species Z already, in terms of this, is already most closely related to Botanicurus. So if I had to hypothesize, I'd probably say that species Z is most closely related to Botanicurus based on the structural evidence alone. Now we know that we can't just go by structural evidences because I'm sure that you guys have seen people outside that look like you or that have similar features as you, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're in your family or that you're related to them. Same thing here, we can't just go by the physical. We have to get deeper into the technology and go by molecular evidence as well. So in part two, coming near you, you will need to conduct four tests of molecular evidence and that'll help to further either support your hypothesis or refute it and to which you'll be able to answer the rest of your conclusion questions that are there. But this concludes the first part, which is molecular, uh, sorry, structural evidence. Next week, we'll be moving on to molecular evidence.